you'd be sure to lose your appetite in these situations. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 painfully awkward moments on Come Dine With Me. So if I'm honest, um, you are lovely, but I find you a little bit patronising, um, but in a lovely way, quite pleasant with how you do it, so it's a skill you've got. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most cringeworthy and embarrassing moments from these competitive dinner parties. We waited all night for him to do something funny and great, and he comes out with, ar, 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 ar. I kind of do it myself. <laughs> Number 10, the sardine. You have that big sardine. Just make sure got your name first. Karen would back. like a sardine. Yeah. The one thing you don't want to do when you're a guest at a dinner party is vomit at the dining table. Unfortunately for Mark, sardines are on the menu this week, and he's not the biggest fan of them. Ironically, one of the only guests who isn't squeamish about the fish is the vegetarian. But Mark takes a sardine to be polite, and ends up trying to hide the fish underneath his tagliatelle. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Just take the bone out, put it out of your mouth. When he's encouraged to try a bit, he gets a mouthful of fish bones and can barely keep the food down. Few things are as embarrassing as retching while everybody else tries to eat. I think this daughter went down okay. Really? Apart from Mark almost vomiting with the sardines. Ah, that. Number nine, the tiff. We have quite an unconventional relationship okay. in that we don't actually live together. Tensions will rise when a couple have to cook together and entertain one another, and fights aren't a rare occurrence on Couples Come Dine With Me. However, few were as memorable as Debbie and Richard. Their constant fighting got so much that Debbie stormed out right after the filet mignon was served. If we were married, we'd be having a divorce. <laughs> were you still 98% right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Deb. Richard had to go out and comfort her, while the other guests were stuck unable to start without her. It became a battle to keep Debbie in the room so that they could eat. It's hard to imagine something more uncomfortable than being at a dinner party when the hosting couple has a row. That might be his heart. <laughs> Stone cold. <laughs> Number eight, the noises. <laughs> While viewers generally relish in the social faux pas and mistakes the contestants often make, this time it was the audience who were really embarrassed, and they weren't even there. Mark serves up his passion fruit pavlova, and it's a resounding success. But things go awry when they engage in another competition. Who can make the weirdest noise? What is the craziest noise that you can make? Oh, Dave, Dave. <laughs> Didn't even ask you. Mark does a bizarre honking noise none of the other guests are quite able to replicate, which they all find very funny. <laughs> But for anybody watching, if we never hear Mark's weird noise again, it will be much too soon. Number seven, the conversation. Why would you do that? Think, you know what? I need a photograph myself semi-naked on my wall in my lounge. Uh, it's ridiculous. Sometimes the contestants will get on like a house on fire, and sometimes they won't. Two of the guests are investigating Holly's house while she cooks, and they find a series of wedding photos. It turns out Holly and her husband have had three separate weddings. They get onto the topic of romance because of this, and Tina reveals that her husband once whisked her away on a surprise holiday. But she gets offended when Reese asks whether he came with her. Did Same. he go with you? <laughs> <laughs> get your jokes up, Tina. Come on, get your jokes up. That's a really horrible thing to say. <laughs> Already, Reese and Tina weren't enjoying each other's company, and all this was only during the starter. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not an overtly romantic kind of person. That yeah. comes across. <gasps> Why? I don't know your body language. Number six, the hairy situation. What's this? <laughs> You're special. Is it brown or blonde? Emma had already had her fair share of mishaps in the kitchen, but the errors continued on the dinner table as well. The guests kept finding hair in their food. Not stray pet hairs, but human hairs that may or may not have belonged to Emma. 
It was difficult to identify the owner because the hairs were brown and she dyed hers recently. Now I have recently dyed my hair blonde, so it might be an old piece of hair in my kitchen. Nice! She even tried to blame the guests and suggested that they were finding their own hairs and getting confused. Though when no hairs were found on any of the other nights, it's clear that Emma was to blame here. Oh, have you got a hair, Emma? Lucky it was on yours. Oh, no. <laughs> Number five, the accordion. But my full name is Julie Katerina and it's hyphenated and it's double barreled. But the reason I didn't tell you yesterday is because I didn't want you to know that I was half German. Julie keeps her German heritage a secret on the previous night, but decides to spill the beans to explain her German themed menu. She does this bizarrely by revealing her full name to them, though full names aren't generally exchanged on Come Dine With Me. But then she goes on the offensive and tells Jess she's given her extra food, implying she's fat. And I've given you a bit of extra meat, Jess, because oh. I know you like your food. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she basically just called me fat. Things got really memorable, however, when Julie broke out her accordion for the entertainment. Playing the accordion is certainly impressive, but Julie lets the others pick up the instrument and embarrass themselves. It's all around uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm preferring the Elvis version. Number four, the burp. While not quite as bad as Mark's retching, you shouldn't burp during dinner either, especially with a group of strangers you're competing with. Carefully cultivated. <laughs> mm, sorry. Talking of cultivated. While searching Caroline's house, they find numerous books about manners, and it's one of these she presents after Tom burps. Though he apologizes straight away, Caroline still picks up her book, which she seemed to have had on hand, and starts reading from it. It may amuse you and young children, but most people will find it offensive <laughs> and unattractive. Tom calls her patronizing in the most polite way possible, and we're forced to sit through a very awkward silence. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Somebody say something. Luckily, Charles was on hand to bore them all to death, which is only marginally better than burping. Number three, the dance. The student fight, a huge, a huge part of it yeah. is always, you have to do a bit of a dance. Definitely one of the weirdest contestants to ever host, Yvonne stole the show no matter whose night it was. In this case, it was Olu's, and he wanted to give them the authentic student experience by throwing a party after dinner, because that's just what you need after a huge meal. There's only one uh. thing that I can do, and it's this! Oh, no, no, no. Ah! oh whoopsie! <laughs> Yvonne steals the limelight when she once again shows off her not-so-hidden talent and attempts to do a handstand right through an open door and into the kitchen. Doing a handstand at a dinner party might be amusing the first time, but by this point, it had lost its novelty. You were almost glad to see her fall. I actually saw it happening. I think that door ain't shut. <laughs> Number two, The Whisk. If you've never seen an episode of Come Dine With Me, then chances are you've still seen this bizarre moment on the internet because it quickly went viral, and with good reason. Kev was whipping up a cheesecake for dessert on his night when he decided to taste the batter. See what that tastes like. While tasting your cooking is good practice, because you know what you've made is actually nice, there are far better ways to go about testing a cake mix than shoving the entire whisk into your mouth with reckless abandon. But it's quite a feat that he managed to do it at all with a whisk that size. Number one, the sore loser. In fourth place is me. Insufferable snob Peter Marsh was never going to win in his week, no matter what he seemed to believe. When on the final night that he happened to be hosting, it fell to Peter to announce who'd won the money, he couldn't bear to see himself last. You won, Jane. He was so disappointed that Jane had won, he didn't even bother to read out the other two's names. Because you have all the grace of a reversing dump truck without any tyres on. His losing tirade has now gone down in history as the show's most infamous moment, as he insulted Jane repeatedly and ordered all three of them to take their money and get out of his house. They probably couldn't wait to leave. So Jane, take your money and get off my property. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.